get that out there right now. <laughs> but I, let, let, we got to begin with all, this flurry of activity in the last 48 hours since the firing of Andrew McCabe. Uh, Matt, let me begin with you. We heard from Chris Christie. We heard from Senator Langford right there, both fairly confident, they say, that President Trump is not going to move to fire Robert Mueller. Are you that sure? I don't know. We're, I guess we have to see what happens. It's been a, a heck of an interesting process. I mean, from my point of view, um, I served with Bob Mueller. Um, I, I trust that he's going to right thing by the American people. And the right thing is he's going to look at the facts. He's going to talk to everyone he should talk to. He's going to look at the facts. And he's going to make recommendations. And I think that's what his job is. And I think what for most of us who support President Trump, the most alarming part of all this is that some of our worst fears that the FBI and people within the FBI were somehow agitating against the president uh, turn out to be true. You have James Comey and you have now uh, Mr. McKay, both kind of caught up in this idea that they were leaking and inappropriately leaking. And you have the, uh, you have the, own, the ethics officer recommending that Mr. McCabe be fired. I mean, I think this is a moment where the country should take a step back in a bipartisan way and look at what happened at the but FBI. When you, look at the, when you look at the substance of those so-called leaks, and of course we should say that McCabe says that what he was doing is fully authorized as deputy director. Although the ethics officer disagrees with him. Yeah, but, but just on the substance of what was being leaked, actually leaking information showing that they were going after continuing the investigation of Hillary Clinton, not what President Trump has suggested. Well, back on that question, remember, it was James Comey and uh, who uh, made this final determination to not go after Hillary Clinton on what people, some people saw as infractions dealing with her server and her emails. Now you, you hear from other folks who say that within that investigation, there were plenty of those prosecutors who wanted to take the steps. Why did James Comey step away? And then why did he so strangely come in right before the election and re-engage? George, the Mueller investigation should continue, must continue. But there was something else that happened this past week that should happen. Gina Haspel, a practitioner and advocate of torture, was nominated to be head of the CIA. And the Senate Intelligence Committee, you had Senator Langford on of the committee, has been sitting on a 6,700-page report that must be declassified. It was commissioned by the committee. It has never been, except for a summary report, been released. And it is vital to show what the committee found in terms of lying about the torture program and also how ineffectual it was. That should lead the Senate to not confirm Gina Haspel, but the declassification of such information is in vital in the public interest, especially as we sit here on the 15th anniversary this month of a war we were taken into by lies, by deceit, George, and the destabilization of the Middle East yeah. George, you and our country. You, you open with McCabe. The indecency here is the president. His attacks on him, his attacks on Jeff Sessions, his attacks on anyone. Uh, if, if you work in this administration as a career official or an appointee, this is like the movie Get Out. You, you, you are in the sunken place. And his behavior is shameful. If the president had simply allowed the process to move forward, it would be fine. But for him constantly agitating on, on social media, uh, that's why people are saying it's tainted. He... he you're right. Um, you know, there is, uh, he shouldn't be agitating. He shouldn't be commenting on these things. Matt's also right. There's some real troubling behavior out of the FBI over these last, this last election and on both sides. Um, but here's one thing I think is really important to point out. Andrew McCabe is a 20-year veteran of the FBI. He has been for virtually all of his career in honorable public servant. He may deserve to be fired. But boy, you better find criminal wrongdoing or that he broke the law if you're going to deny him his pension. I mean, the way it was done was so humiliating. I was moved by Mark Pocan, who's head of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, offered to bring in uh, McCabe into his office to work on election security so he could get vested in his pension. But again, I come back, George. There was more news this past week. A lot of ink and talk spilled about McCabe and Mueller. What about the new Secretary of State? He's, he, he gets more funds from the Coke industry brothers, and he, he wants to go to war. Hometown. He wants that, to go to war with. Come on. Listen. Well, well, first he wants of all, to go no tears shed for right. Rex Tillerson. There are tears shed for a hawk, and it now seems, if I could just consistent in this administration, seems to be a desire to take this country to war, to conflict with Iran, which I think must be 
Well, that, oh, that, 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 one, one of the issues that we face every single week is is, is the, the amount of news that continues news. to flow. I know. Uh, out I'm not of making and, your life easier. And, and, <laughs> and Matt, one of the, the questions, because I wanted to pick up on, on, there seemed to be a fair amount of churning inside the White House this week. As Roland pointed out, he fires Rex Tillerson without even calling him up before firing. The firing is done is is done on the tweet. Brings in Mike Pompeo. One of the things we're seeing there is the president appears to want to surround himself only with people who basically agree with him. I don't agree with that at all. I, I do think there's a lot of churn in the administration, and I think it's a function of the fact you had a guy be elected president. This hasn't happened since George Washington, who came outside of government. Even George Washington had oh, military experience, okay. and he helped found the country. So this is a very unique historical uh, episode. And he comes in, and he gets a lot of advice of who we should put in these political positions after a year in the job. The most heady political wins we've ever seen with a special counsel almost every day of his administration. He's now saying, I understand the job better. I know who I need to have around me. For anybody to say anything other than Mike Pompeo, who finished top in his class in West Point, went to Harvard Law, has been a CEO of two companies, has been a member of Congress, is anything other than qualified for this job. It's really kind of an absurd statement. And so he's putting people around him. I think General Kelly is also somebody who uh, has earned respect from the American people. He's putting people around him who are giving Giving him advice. By the way, you say he, he wants to have people around him who only agree with him, right? Well, he just picked, picked a new head of uh, 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 a new economic advisor who disagrees with him. Well, on it did yeah. seem like until the end of the week, Sarah, it did seem like right up until Friday morning that General Kelly might have been the next to go. He may have been the next to go. You know, the other thing that we've seen in these firings is there seems to be this long run up to someone does in fact either resign or, or uh, is outright fired. So the fact that there's so much conversation around General Kelly, H.R. McMaster, it's hard to imagine they're long-term players here. But, but it also shows how all of these folks, they fail for the con. You know, I use the hashtag, we tried to tell you. Oh, I'm going to hire the best people, the smartest people. You don't have this much turnover. Uh, in, he hasn't reached 18 months yet, uh, the number of people who are leaving, and it's how he also treats people. And I'm telling you, if, if I'm working this administration, I'm trying to get out as fast as Don't I worry, can. it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, 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 no. I can guarantee you it's not going to happen because I'm way too honest and will tell him exactly Come what he on. thinks. Big, he doesn't want to hire people I don't who tells him what right. he thinks. The big so. turnover is going to be the blue wave. Well, that's what that I wanted to get to right next. That comes in uh, 2018, November 2018. What we saw was stunning in Pennsylvania. And I think you have 100-plus districts beyond that one, who are more anti-Trump than P PA-18. And 20, where labor plays a big role, because Connor Lamb, it's ridiculous. Paul Ryan says Connor Lamb ran as a conservative. Give me a break. He ran for universal health care, protecting Social Security and Medicare, and for labor rights, and for all kinds of important... He did run against and Nancy Pelosi. Well, sure did. And you know what? Some, some Democrats will. I think she's an extraordinarily effective legislator speaker, but she's not in power. Trump, McConnell, Ryan are in power. And I think those who run with Trump are going to have a harder time than those who run with Pelosi. But it's important to run in your district with concrete, bread and That's right. butter, Sarah, kitchen table issues. Connor Lamb is a loud canary in the coal mine for Republicans. He is a loud canary in the coal mine, George. You're right. I mean, look, I would love to point to Republican fundraising numbers, tell you that uh, the political rules have changed in the last two years, which to some degree they have. It's, it's harder to predict. But does it transfer elections. to candidates who But here's, here's what really matters if you're looking at just the data. We've had nine special elections uh, in this uh, since the president took office, and Democrats have performed their partisan advantage in this district, their partisan number in that district, by an average of 15 points. If that holds, Democrats are going to have a great night in November. It's not just going to be a wave. It's going to be heading toward a tsunami. But, but Canada, but equality you, matters, though. But here's a piece. Can equality does matter. But what we're missing out on is the mobilization and the organization that's happening on the ground. When you see what happened in <clears throat> that particular district, also, what's happening on Mother's Day, Reverend William Barber, Repairs of the Breach, they're launching the Poor People's Campaign, 40 consecutive days of action as well. They've been meeting around the nation for two years in Idaho, Kansas, North Carolina, Ohio, across the country, whites, blacks, Asians, Latinos, and people are underestimating what is happening on the ground. We keep focusing on, well, who's a candidate, what's happening in D.C., but there's a mass mobilization happening, and I'm telling you, just this weekend, the Black Women's Roundtable had their event. Yeah. Melody Campbell said she had women coming who had, she had never heard of. She said, bro, how do they even know we even exist? Because folks are saying what this man is doing is wrong, and Republicans better be real we're concerned. Out, we're out of time. You worried? 
Of course I'm worried, but let's look at this. It's the economy and the strength of the economy. Do people feel better about their own economic prospects, its candidate uh, quality, and it's the fundraising numbers which are going to matter. And when you look at all that, I'd sure rather have our cards than their cards. It's Trump, okay. Trump, Trump.